so coming on my third month now, so three months in total. Um, I've been here. I've got only a few weeks to go before I start travelling, which is which is going to be nice and through the summer. Yeah, and what's all the uh, decision for you to move over to the UK? Just a chance before uh, hitting the big three O to use up the visa? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wasn't going to mention it, but now you have. It was it was main main reason of mine. I kind of hit twenty nine last year, and I was like, oh, I really need to to do something. I'd had the same sort of job in the same school for the last few years, and then I was like, right, I need to need to get out and do some stuff. And then yeah, it just all came came to plan. I was yeah ready to take some long service leave at work. I got a year's leave and then, um, yeah, I was able to book um, flights over and, and visit some friends on the way over as well in Switzerland. So, um, yeah, it's all kind of, it all came into place um, late last year. Now, before we get on to talking about uh, you being in the UK, of course, uh, first of all, you were originally a beach volleyball player. Uh, what brought you across to playing uh, Aussie Rules football and, and joining the Melbourne Uni Muggers? Yeah, so again, volleyball was kind of hit a stalemate with in terms of finding partners and sponsorship, and and like most most sports and female sports. So then uh, it was time for a change and, and to learn a new sport. And I actually had a, a good friend of mine, Esther Hassett. Um, her and I worked together, and we um, got started talking. She said, "Yeah, come down and try the football." I'd always wanted to, but I'd had netball and beach volleyball and other kind of non-contact sports. I had to watch make sure my body didn't get injured and whatnot mum was always a bit bit worried about um the contact of football so um yeah so I was like all right well it's probably about time I gave it a go and that was the rest is I guess history I went down to a pre-season maybe three years ago now uh through the summer and and never went back to beach volleyball after that so it's been pretty pretty good since then and uh, we've actually been talking about the likes of Ebony Rose Antonio, who was a WNBL basketballer who's come across to play footy. Uh, Kirby Bentley, who was a netballer, come across to play footy. For you making that transition, did, did it come naturally and it was just a short amount of time before picking up the skills and uh, to be required to play uh, Premier Division football? Yeah, I, obviously it's a completely different sport. It's a summer sport compared to a winter sport. It's two people versus 18 on the field. It's sand on grass. So it's a, they're completely different. But I guess just um, having the general knowledge of, of how sport sporting teams work and I guess um, hand-eye coordination came fairly naturally. And I'd, I'd played all sorts of sports as a kid and I'd always had a kick around of the football. I never had uh, – I don't have brothers or anything, but I had lots of male friends that we'd just muck around together as, as kids and, and in the playground. So that's how it all really – um, yeah, came about. So the transition wasn't too bad. Um, I guess just getting used to that many girls around and and um, yeah, a bit more, a bit muddy and a bit colder and and whatnot, as opposed to running around on the beach in a bikini. Now, of course, you had the opportunity to, to pull on the big V and you played in the exhibition games as well, playing for the Western Bulldogs. Um, I believe when you went across about three, uh, three months ago, it was maybe just before the announcement that, that looked like 2017 would be the year that there'd be a, uh, a women's national comp. Was that playing on your mind at all, knowing that you'd be missing a year of uh, at least footy in Melbourne? Yeah, look, it was playing on my mind anyway, the, the chance that I could be possibly drafted again for the two games. So I was disappointed to miss out on one, let alone two. And now I've heard of of it possibly, uh, well, I think the next game is definitely going to be um, shown broadcast on, on television. So that's that's another chance that I've missed out on. Again, the 2017, um, well, 2020 was definitely out of the question for me in terms of probably my age and, and whatnot. But 2017, I think it's... That's probably put me back a bit moving over here, but um, I, I don't know if 2017 was even realistic for me. It's another two years away. I'm still getting a bit older and um, things change, so I'm, I'm not too sure really um, what the future holds for football, but I'm just yeah really enjoying um, teaching and learning um, over here. So, of course, you moved across the UK. You're teaching at the moment. How did you end up getting uh, wound up with with AFL London and the Wimbledon Hawks? Yeah, so I was like, I was pretty upset that I was going to be missing football. That was probably the main thing, other than family and friends, of course, that I'd be missing back home. So um, I thought, right, I need to, need to get involved over here. Obviously, quite a few Australians move over and 
and whatnot. And I ended up just did, doing some research. I found out that there was a new new women's league starting. Uh, they'd have four teams uh, starting up. And then originally I emailed all four of them, just said, look, I'm, I'm super interested. Uh, let me know when training's on. I'm not sure where I'm living yet or what's going to be easiest for me to get to. I wasn't familiar with any of the transport and, and, and areas around here. So once I finally worked out where I was living, it was, um, yeah, came down to the, the Wimbledon Hawks um, was going to be the closest and, and most accessible, I think. And uh, that's where you managed to sign up and play in the Wimbledon Hawks at the moment, uh, top of the table. Just to get an insight in, into the competition, what is the makeup like with the teams? Are we looking at a uh, majority expats? Uh, is there a good number of, uh, of uh, uh, English-born women wanting to play the game? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. I think personally with our club, the, the Wimbledon Hawks South is probably the most diverse in terms of um, nationalities represented, I guess. So um, we've got, yeah, girls from, from all around. There's There are quite a, a lot of Australians throughout the, the men's and the women's leagues over here, but there are still um, still some English and, and all sorts of, there's Kiwis, we've got a couple of Germans, Scottish. Um, so there's... There's a mix of, of all of that, and I know at the Hawks we've got two very passionate um, locals that are running the uh, the men's and, and the women's presidents there. So um, yeah, so I think it, it's it's a mix. It's it's probably there are quite a lot of Australians, yeah, but um, I think the more and more people that get to see it and are exposed to it, the more that they're they're becoming involved. And with yourself, because you're an experienced player, do you see yourself almost taking on a pseudo coaching role to be able to teach those that are new to the women's game in uh, the UK? Yeah, look, I, I kind of came over, and uh, obviously they've they've been established for quite a while, the men's teams especially, and um, obviously having a female come over and kind of tell them do this, do that was probably not what I wanted to do. So I, I eased my way into it, and. And then, so, well, when I say ease, by the second session, I was kind of running a, a, a couple of drills and whatnot. But um, they, I, I've really enjoyed bringing the, the skills and knowledge that I've I've learnt from back home over, and the girls especially are just so receptive to to anything that that has been said from me and anyone else that's got that experience. Um, they're just so willing to learn, and um, it's it's such a great team environment. Everyone's just so supportive. So. Um, and, and we knew it was a new league. We, we knew it was a new competition, a new sport. So we're all learning um, every game. We're coming up with new rules we have to explain and, and new tactics and, and skills that we need to work on and build on. So it's, it's continually learning from, from when I first got here to the end of the season, I think. so. And how do those uh, rules and playing services, etc., differ to what we're obviously used to here in Australia? Oh, in terms of rules, there's really no rules. Um, the only there's there's no rule changes. It's all the same, same, same tackling, same skill base. The only thing that, that varies is just the amount of girls on each team. Um, as as we've said, it's the first year that the league's been around, so some clubs are still struggling to field a full side. So we just have to kind of weigh up how many girls are, are there and who's available on the day and how many how many we're going to play um, on that day. And uh, how about uh, how easy is it for um, uh, the sides to be able to get some grounds? Is it uh, similar to here in Australia, essentially taking over cricket grounds uh, uh, during the year? Yeah, well, the pre-season cup, the, we actually ended up on a, um, a rugby pitch, uh, so they kind of made it oval-like with some with some cones, um, and then the goalposts have aren't around so it literally it's the rugby post and then a couple of sticks either side so um we're doing with what we can some of the ovals um have have a proper full size ground and and proper goal post but we kind of have to make do with some of the the rugby pitches and, and soccer fields they've got over here um and just adjust those accordingly i think well, we see occasionally every now and again on YouTube the odd report that comes through of um, uh, of some school somewhere is taking on uh, Aussie rules for their kids. Being a teacher, are you be able to tell us if, if there's any schools, at least in the area that you're at, that it's trying to take it on as part of the curriculum? <laughs> uh, I'm trying. It's not <laughs> happened yet, but... Um... Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely definitely trying to expose it. I'd love to be able to run around with a bag of footballs and, and get the football in, in a heap of kids' hands because I think grassroots is a big part of it. Um, 
with any any development of any sport um, in any country. So I think ideally love to be able to, to take that around and, and show it around and, and expose everyone to how great our sport is and um, knowing the girls that I've and guys that I've met over here that have never seen the game, never heard of it and then get involved and, and just fall in love with it. I think I think the kids would be the same. So that that could be possibly an opportunity down the track that I might um, might be looking into. Now, uh, last year the International Cup was held in Melbourne. There's quite a number of men t- men's teams, but uh, there was only about five women's side, I- including two from the um, Pame Seven, I think there might have been. There was two at least from uh, the USA yeah. and two from uh, Canada. N- nothing uh, excluding from Ireland from the European region coming down, but I believe that's changing and uh, England have uh, set up their own women's international side. They have. They have. They've got the, um, they've got the England uh, Vixens looking to uh, play next year so um yeah we, we played against some of the Irish girls um on the weekend we took a trip up to Newcastle which was nice and um played against some of those girls who were actually down in in Melbourne and played the um the, the post game of, of Diamond Creek Melbourne Uni last year um so I got to meet some of those girls last weekend and yeah the English girls are definitely looking to to field a team of um British citizens to to go over, I think they head over to Croatia um, soon enough. I think later, a bit later August, in the year. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. So they head over there, which will be um, which will be good for them, and, and hopefully some more exposure for our sport, which will be good. Actually, I'll correct myself. That AFL Europe Cup uh, over in uh, Croatia coming up in October. Is there any chance that they could? October, put the, yeah. yeah. Is there any chance they could put the phone call into you while you're uh, touring around Europe and maybe uh, be a ring in? Look, they can definitely call me, but I think and in court, I'm, I'm not sure about the rules yet. I haven't really looked into it, but um, I think it's got to be a British citizen. So I miss out on the playing role. There might be some sort of other coaching developmental support role that I might look into. Um, I, I possibly will be around for October, so I don't think I will be able to pull on the boots though for that one. So I'll leave it to them. And, uh, Lauren, just before we let you go, um, when can your uh, Melbourne Uni uh, friends and family uh, expect you back home? <laughs> oh, um, well, they won't be expecting me back for this season, that's for sure. Um, they'll, they could possibly see me over over the pre-season um, through the summer. Um, and then I'm not too sure what, what 2016 holds yet. I've... I have no plans as to whether I'll be back, whether I'll be staying in Melbourne. So it's kind of all up in the air at the moment. I've I've really enjoyed my my time over here. I've enjoyed being part of the Wimbledon Hawks and and just getting to know a whole heap of different people, new places. So I think there's probably still some more travelling and exploring to do next year, which may probably keep me away from from the muggers again for another year. 